Welcome to the Techthusiasm Networking Overhaul. Yeah, I've been talking about this upgrade for a while, the last couple years of the channel even, uh, to some extent. We've been focused so much on the home theater space. We did all kinds of audio overhauls. This year was really the year of video in the home theater, but we're going general tech, not just for the home theater, but for all aspects of the Techthusiasm smart home. We're going networking, and I'm sitting here looking at about $3,000 of Ubiquiti gear uh, that's making up the entirety of Techthusiasm Network Overhaul Phase 1. So there's going to be a whole bunch of content to come, uh, breaking down every one of these devices individually, taking a look at them, and then really getting into the settings, the UIs, the configuration capabilities, the power and all of that of the Ubiquiti system as we go through Phase 1 and onward into future phases, bringing cameras and other elements into the system. But in this video specifically, uh, I just kind of want to give an overview of what Phase 1 is all about. Talk a little bit about the equipment that I did opt to purchase, uh, what its factors and features uh, and kind of uh, selling proposition was effectively. So let's dive right in. So this is going to be a very uniform overhaul of the networking that I've uh, that I've ever had uh, essentially in any of my households. Uh, to date, I have like some Netgear stuff. I've had some Asus switches and just little kind of bits and pieces of different things, really more best buy accessible, uh, maybe let's say maybe more general consumer level stuff, but we're stepping up to, I think, to a more enthusiast level brand, a more powerful, capable, and cohesive system. So part and parcel with that, I've got the space reserved for the Ubiquiti setup. Basically six units of rack space uh, right here will contain the entirety of all of the devices that are over here. So let's kind of go through them bit by bit. We'll start with the biggest box first. Uh, this is the Enterprise 48 PoE. Now, I was looking at a bunch of their different switch options. I was looking at the Pro Maxes. Most of what you'll see that I bought actually focused in essentially the Pro Max type of line uh, within the Ubiquiti system. And I did want to go with a 48 port model, essentially. I've had a 24 port switch for a long time. It's almost at capacity, but I want to add several cameras to the house. I want to do more uh, power over ethernet type thing. And I can only conceive that as time goes by, We'll probably be adding more network devices to the home rather than taking any away. So 48 should be plenty of capacity for a long time to come. And again, including absorbing all of the extra network devices that are that are in my mind and kind of in my plan. All of those cameras, the access point and different elements of the system, I definitely want them all to be power over ethernet. That's how we pulled the original lines to get to some of those spots. And I didn't want to be constrained essentially. That, that was the whole point behind spending more of the money Essentially, half of all of the equipment right here is encompassed in this Enterprise 48 PoE switch to begin with. But I didn't want to cut corners. I like the fact that it's 2.5G on every port. I see a lot more 2.5G networking coming in the future as devices get refreshed and upgraded. I think we're going to see a lot more wired 2.5G coming. So I didn't want to be limited, I guess, if I bought a 48 port switch and, and only 12 ports or 2.5 or some limited number of ports. I also didn't want to be limited by, hey, some ports may be PoE, some may not. These are all just PoE plus ports. There are no PoE plus plus ports, but I think we got a longer way to go before worrying about that much power delivery required for a power over Ethernet driven device. I think the 30 watts or so that a PoE plus port delivers is going to give uh, plenty of power for the types of stuff that I'm planning to be connecting for a good while to come. I like the fact that it was one unit, pretty much everything here will be one unit allowing me to fit in everything that I want to fit within the six units of space. So yeah, that's the big boy, that's the workhorse. Um, I also love the fact that it has the 10G ports. So we recently upgraded the Synology there to a dual 10G network card. So we will be taking advantage of 10G connection for data between the NAS and the rest of the system in the household, making for really fast file access, file transfers, copies and the like as I'm doing video production for the YouTube channel uh, as the family is accessing photos and schoolwork and, and all the different types of things that we use the NAS for. So that's a fun one. Super excited, pretty much again, the cornerstone of the setup. Right, we'll kind of go down in price actually. So in, in some respects, maybe it's premature to call the switch the cornerstone. This is probably really the cornerstone. This will be certainly the brain of the system. I have a Dream Machine Pro Max. So again, as I mentioned, I was kind of sticking in the Pro Max level of most of the things that I was looking for. Uh, in this model, it was only $100 more than the next level of Dream Machine. And for, for 
pretty considerable amount of additional network processing power and speed. Uh, there's two drive bays in this one for camera and VRs, which I will be taking advantage of again as we're looking towards ubiquity cameras, network cameras within the system. Of course, it delivers a 2.5G WAN port. Uh, as I look forward, hopefully maybe to getting finally up to fiber and increasing our speeds. Right now, my, right now my internet is based on cable and it is only 1.2 gig. But again, I wanna be future-proof uh, or at least future-proof for a pretty good period of time with this stuff. So I wanted the 2.5G WAN port. And then of course, uh, wanted a matching 10G uplink connection for the big ol' 48 PoE switch. So I'm really excited to dig into this, particularly the menus and the configuration and the power and the options and all of that stuff. If you watch the channel for any length of time, you know that software UIs and interfaces, uh, GUIs and that sort of thing uh, is something that I, I, I talk a lot about. Um, I design that kind of stuff for a living or my engineering teams do and, and I take it very seriously the way stuff looks and feels and operates in my technology. And so super excited to get this thing running and check it all out that way. All right, next component to show off here, uh, we do have basically the cable modem. So uh, again, I'm using WoW for my internet. I have had AT&T try to come out two or three times now kind of unsuccessfully to get a fiber run to the household so we can really get ramped up some to some more higher internet speeds, but it just hasn't worked out. We kind of made the decision when we built the house that we finished everything. I'm standing in my basement here and even in the storage room, it's all drywall. The ceiling, the walls, everything is trimmed out drywall. And so getting a fiber line from the outside of the house, inside the house, and routed down to this rack isn't necessarily an easy undertaking. So I think I'm gonna be using cable for a while to come. I do hope that we can get up to like 1.5 gig or maybe two gig type speeds on a cable internet connection. Again, with while I am upgraded, to their fastest speed right now, which is 1.2 gigabit with no data caps at least, that's cool. So I can download terabytes and terabytes of movies to my Kaleidoscape system there. So uh, part and parcel with that, I did opt to go ahead and get the Unify cable modem. I wanted, again, all the networking stuff to be consistent. I wanted all of it to sit together here, uh, rack mounted and rack based, nice and clean. So I did go ahead and pick this one up as well. The other thing you'll know, of course, if you're a fan of the channel or you've been around for a while, I like clean looking stuff. I like nice looking stuff. And so I did pick up a couple of 24 port patch panels. So essentially in the stack of devices here, we'll have the, the switch sandwiched between these and the little jumper cables kind of going from the bottom to the bottom row and from the top one to the top row uh, of ports there. I think this is really a necessity for having the switch face out and keeping kind of the whole installation clean. Very inexpensive relative to the cost of the actual electronic elements uh, of this networking system. But again, we're gonna keep it all nice and clean. That would have been cool to have the ether lighting and that kind of stuff going on as well, but the enterprise switch doesn't do it. That's fine, it'll still be, uh, it'll still be looking pretty cool and there'll be plenty of nice blinking lights to look at on the front of the rack right there. So again, a couple of 24 port patch panels just to keep the install nice and clean. The other item here for cleanliness is a 1U brush panel because there will be a couple things that I'll need to connect into the, to the front uh, of this equipment here that won't actually feed through the patch panels kind of from behind, particularly the 10G connection to the NAS and who knows what other types of cables may wanna feed through in the future. So I did a 1U brush panel. We're gonna start with that basically at the top, then we'll do one of those 24 port patch panels, then the switch, the other 24 port patch panel, then the dream machine, then the cable modem, and we will fill up all of the 6U nice and clean and looking cool. Gotta have the Wi-Fi component tree to go with it, of course, so I picked up just one so far, uh, one U7 Pro Max, again, sticking kind of at the Pro Max level of equipment within the Ubiquiti ecosystem. I'm hoping that I can get away with one of these. We'll see. This one access point is rated for 1,750 square feet, that's pretty much the surface space, surface area uh, of the main floor of my house. Of course, if I do need to add more to get out extended into the backyard or if I want further over to get to the garage and kind of the front yard, I'll do it if I have to, but I just wanted to start with one. I run my current router in my office, which is uh, a Netgear Nighthawk type model, and it's fine. We don't have to have Wi-Fi extenders throughout other areas of the home or even outside to be able to use our devices and move around in the spaces that we usually occupy when we're using our phones and laptops and computing and stuff like that. So if we can get away with one, great. If we need more than one, well, I'll add them 
as we go. I think it'll be an interesting part of the experiment to see uh, what the reliability, the coverage, and the stability of the Wi-Fi connection is with this. Cool that it's Wi-Fi 7. Looking forward as we upgrade more devices, uh, of course, to add more Wi-Fi 7 uh, wireless devices to the household. And we'll be ready for it with the Pro Mac. All right, the rest of this stuff is basically kind of a jump start to the cabling and the interconnects and the connections. So I did buy basically the 50 pack. Uh, I think, yeah, the 50 pack this was of essentially the Ubiquiti patch cables. Again, didn't need the ether lighting ones, which saved a little bit of money. So the extra couple hundred dollars that the Enterprise switch was over the 48 Pro Max PoE switch, uh, some of that money was saved back by not buying essentially 48 or 49 of the ether lighting patch cables. So again, wanted to stay in brand, especially for all the stuff that we're going to see on the front of the rack. So this will do all of those jumpered connections between the patch panels and the switch. And one of these will also make the connection between the cable modem and the dream machine. And we'll have one left over. All right, the last piece of ubiquity stuff in the order is the fiber optic uh, 10G cable that's going to run from the Synology over uh, to the 48 Enterprise switch. Again, giving me that awesome super bandwidth speed between the NAS and the rest of the stuff in the system. I did only order one of these. Um, I didn't realize at the fact when I placed my order remembering that, oh, that the network card that I bought to put in the Synology is like a Melanix, I think brand Connect X3 model, actually is a dual 10G port. So I probably could have even have ran two of these and done some kind of like dual link connection between the NAS. I think we're already gonna be running this thing way faster than even the hard drives are gonna feed data. Although I do have an SSD cache drive in there now. So I'm really curious to see how it all plays out. We'll see how much we use the NAS. I can always just pick up another cable and do a dual connection as well but I did want to be covered for at least the first connection as we get things installed and get things set up. So went with the Ubiquiti cable for that purchase. And then lastly, the, the only thing in this kind of wave one setup that I didn't actually buy from Ubiquiti, I don't understand why they don't seem to sell these. Uh, I couldn't find them on the Ubiquiti store anywhere, but given that they sell the patch panels, I don't understand why they don't sell the Keystone Jacks that kind of click in to, to do the coupling from the cable that's coming from behind to the patch cable that will be in the front. So for this stuff, I just went to Amazon, uh, picked up a couple of 25 packs. It's funny how switches come in like 24s, but then some of this other stuff comes in 25s and 50s, I guess. If you drop one and step on it, you, you got one to spare and that's fine. But the, I think these were like 30 bucks or so, maybe even less than that. It might've been like 30, 40 bucks for the, for the two 25 packs. But this will give me the patch connections that I need to be able to plug in all my network cabling from the back uh, and then make the jumper connection from the, the patch panels to the switch itself. So altogether, this whole order was right on the order of about $3,200. I want to thank everybody that supports Techthusiasm with your views, your clicks, your likes, your affiliate purchases, and hey, buying your equipment from me because it's really all of you awesome channel folks and supporters uh, help to create the channel revenue. Uh, and the income to be able to do this stuff. I'm doing this stuff uh, as a positive feedback loop uh, of spending money coming in from the channel to do more things for the channel. And I think adding, covering ubiquity, covering more advanced enthusiast level networking going forward on the channel, hopefully will really resonate and folks will find some interest in that. Uh, this was all just purchased straight up, I should say as well. Uh, no accommodation, no <laughs> discounts, whatever. I went to the ubiquity store like everybody else, built up my cart and, and paid uh, paid the price that was required to get the stuff. But if anybody from the Ubiquity Creator Program happens to catch this video, hey, please reach out. I, I would definitely love to talk to you folks for sure. So I think this is going to be an exciting series of videos coming up. Again, all of the, the hands-on detail, setup, configuration, and all that stuff. I think it's going to really power up the networking capability of the Techthusiasm household. I'm excited to get some of the devices that we have that are 10 and 2.5G capable running at that level of speed. It's gonna really facilitate a whole bunch of computing and office type uh, use. Take advantage of that extra 20% <laughs> internet speed that's coming on through the pipe right now at 1.2 gig and we springboard from there. I'm also curious to see if the networking helps with a couple of the little say gremlins that are in my system specifically. There's some networking kind of clash or collision and overlap in some cases between like the Control 4 equipment and some of the Anthem gear and how it presents itself on the network. So it'll be interesting to see if any of that stuff just kind of naturally resolves itself um, or by using 
again, the configuration, the power, and the capability of the Ubiquiti stuff. Maybe there are some settings, some options, and things that I can use to work around or resolve those types of issues as well. So lots to come, lots of learning, lots of sharing, lots of information and education. And again, I hope you find it useful. Sound off in the comments and let me know. Do you have Ubiquiti hardware? What do you think of it? What do you have? Uh, and particularly, what kind of content can I make? What are the things that you want to see me do with this stuff? What is the information that you want to see me share all about it? Sound off in the comments. Let me know. Let's discuss. Of course, if you want to support the channel so I can keep doing more of this stuff, let's get to phase two. Let's buy the cameras. Let's buy the doorbell. Let's buy some of the other things that are in the Ubiquity system. Hey, come to me first for your audio, video, home theater, and technology electronic needs. I'm a dealer for a lot of awesome brands like Kaleidoscape, JVC, Sony Epson, all kinds of different stuff. Panamorph, if you want a lens for your super high-end home theater. Uh, I do consulting, and if I can't help you directly, I have business partners and affiliate referrals and stuff that can, like audio advice and more. Also, please do your regular shopping. Amazon, Newegg, Target, Best Buy, and more. All those links are down in the description. And if you're feeling like it, hey, become a channel member. Leave a super thanks, PayPal Venmo tip. Any and all of that stuff is always much appreciated, and again, it's the enabler for being able to do things like this for you. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video, leave a comment. Let's discuss ubiquity networking in your household. Thanks for watching. Come on back for more home theater and home networking discussion and fun.